Hello and welcome to worship at Grace Lutheran Church in Tomahawk, Wisconsin. We are so glad to have you with us virtually today. It is uh, the Sunday, uh, 19th Sunday after Pentecost, October 11th. My name is Pastor Kathy Tolman and my husband and I, John, uh, came to the Northwoods after retiring this June and we've become members here at Grace and um, I've been asked to help out and have graciously accepted uh, the opportunity to be able to preach and teach and share with you all um, in this meantime. I ask right now um, that we place our attention to the announcements. Uh, my husband John this morning will be the reader. Uh, technology is Mike and Karen. Projection um, will be done and has been done by Lisa and our liturgy was prepared by Sandy. We'd like to remember in our thoughts and prayers this week, uh, Phyllis Heikinen, who passed away this past week. Uh, she was uh, an organist in this congregation for a time and a member. Uh, the memorial or life celebration service will be taking place uh, privately, uh, but please keep the family in prayer. I am offering a Bible study uh, during this uh, fall, and it's called Unshakable Hope. It's a book study of, of Max Lucado's, and it's for the women of grace and anyone who, uh, any friend who needs some hope right now. We still have one or two books available, and if you would like to get a book and be part of this, which will be taking place on Zoom, please call the office, uh, or you can contact me. We have a couple fundraisers going on for our youth right now. The first is the one that supports the wilderness trip, and it's the 100 board, and it is out uh, in the open area out front. And all you need to do with that is you just take an envelope that has a number on it and put a check or cash that uh, equals that number, and then together that will be a great way for our wilderness group to be able to uh, fund a double group since this past year they weren't able to take one of the groups to go. Uh, secondarily, there is also a fundraiser uh, that is offering the ability for our youth to do fall chores around your home. Uh, please contact Faye if you have an idea of someone who could use some help in their yard or washing windows or elsewhere. And I would say that in this, uh, as an introduction, that in this time of COVID and physical distance, for the sake of our neighbor, it is easy for this spreading of the table that we're going to be talking about in the, in the parable that comes out of the Gospel of Matthew 22 uh, to seem less than what it once was. Yet we continue to be called in faith, and we are sent forth in faith to be able to live our lives in thanksgiving for all God has given to us and has done for us. God's invitation to us to the table is not only for today, but it is for the feast that will have no end. Our gathering song this morning is Open the Eyes of My Heart.
continue now with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Christ, Messiah, Savior of the world, we do not have the strength to reject that which separates us from you. Alone we never will. Forgive our foolish attempts to save ourselves. Save us. Lead us toward the world you dream for us and for all. Amen. Siblings in Christ, God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and through his resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, let's live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Let the people say, Amen. Let's gather together now in prayer. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure. Transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Psalm, Psalm 23. Please join responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, the fourth chapter, starting at the fourth verse. Though writing from prison and facing an uncertain future, Paul calls on the Philippians to rejoice and give thanks to God no matter what the circumstance. 
God's peace is with us and binds together our hearts and minds in Jesus Christ, especially when things around us do not always seem peaceful. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing these things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Amen. We'll continue now with the time with the children. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to have you all here. It's good to have you all here with us as well. It's been a great week, a beautiful week of weather, and a time when hopefully in, uh, in between all the other things you have to do that you've been able to be out and about just a little bit. I have something here with me this morning. This is called a stuffy by my four-year-old granddaughter, and she left it at our house. As you can imagine, if you have a stuffy of your own, she was really sad that she left it behind when she left to go home. I want you to think about a time when you felt like you didn't have something you needed in order to be able to be comfortable, feel safe, be happy. God gives us in our hearts and our minds everything we need in order to be kind, to be fair to other people, to be gentle. Sometimes, though, we think we need something to hold on to in order to be able to do that. And what I want you to know today is that God is with you no matter what. And when you are struggling to be able to be all you can be, all you need to do is ask God for help. Ask Jesus to help you. And it'll be much easier then for you to be kind and fair and loving to other people. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for giving us stuffies like this little stuffy, but thank you too for helping us always to remember that you are with us and that you can give us what we need to help us be loving and kind and grateful and gracious to others. Bless our children this week and all that they do. Help them to remember always whose they are, your children. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll continue now with the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 22, beginning with the first verse. Here Jesus tells a parable indicating that the blessings of God's kingdom are available to all, but the invitation is not to be taken lightly, and there are consequences for not being prepared in some ways. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. 
And again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered. Everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized the king's slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burnt their city. And then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And the man was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you, brothers and sisters, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It is hard for us today, we who have been accustomed to both hearing and believing that God is love, to hear this parable come from Jesus' lips, much less to come and understand how some poor guy who was invited at the last minute to a party would be rejected and sent away to a place of darkness, seemingly because he didn't wear a particular piece of clothing. More to the point, it's hard to believe that our acceptance, our salvation, and yes, our entrance into heaven, hinges on a simple cloak. So what's the big deal about a wedding garment? Jesus uses parables and small recognizable examples of people, places, and things like kings and weddings and garments to help us grasp grander concepts, concepts like the kingdom of heaven, and that God is moving slowly but surely God's kingdom from the kingdom of this world to that particular heavenly kingdom. Jesus shares these parables, these stories, masterfully, all the while tussling intellectually with the Jewish leaders of the day. The first portion of today's story puts the Jewish leaders in their place. We see that they are those invitees who have rejected again and again the king's invitation to a banquet for his son. And so they are away and gone, and actually, literally, they do this. They leave. And then Jesus continues the parable. The king now sends his servants out a second time, and this time to invite the common folk to the feast, including those who were usually denied a seat at the table, including the likes of us. And soon after, the banquet hall fills and the king enters, his watchful eye takes in the crowd, and there he spies in a distance a man, a man who is missing something essential. And so the king goes to the man, and he asks, friend, friend, almost collegially, hopefully, friend, where is your wedding cloak? It's as if the king is giving him one more chance. But no, instead the man is silent speechless, and his wordlessness and his lack of a wedding cloak are his ticket out the door. The people of Jesus' day knew what the man lacked. They understood the meaning of the cloak. And we can know this too, as it's spelled out for us elsewhere, both in the Old and New Testaments, in Joshua and Isaiah, in Paul's letters and in Revelations 19 
where at the marriage of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, to his bride, the church, she has put on fine linen. You see, the garment is symbolic of two things, allegiance and righteousness. Most of us know about allegiance in this day and age. We know what it takes to show which side we're on, don't we? Let me tell you a little story. A few years ago when I was serving a congregation in Mission, Michigan, I was invited to go see the Michigan State Spartans play my beloved Wisconsin Badgers in the Michigan State football stadium. And so John and I went up to the stadium in East Lansing, and as we were entering the stadium, we were handed a green towel, a towel to wave during the game. And we were handed that by a gate attendant. Now, for me to have waved that towel during the game would frankly have been a lie. I hadn't come with any allegiance to the Spartans. My allegiance was with the opposition. And so into my pocket, the towel went. In the same way, the cloakless man in today's parable showed his true colors by not donning a wedding cloak. Because you see in this story, wearing the wedding cloak also shows not only allegiance, but that the wearer is welcome. It's like a wristband of personal righteousness. A righteousness that comes only when one has been made right with the king through the king's son. A righteousness that becomes ours because of what God has given us, grace and faith to believe in God's mercy. Just as the cloak of righteousness is a gift from God through Christ to us, so too would the cloak and the parable have been given by the king to his guests. If you remember in the story, both good and bad had been led into the banquet hall, and since the man had no allegiance for the king, and he did not wear the cloak to honor the host or his son, he was judged not a friend. He was bound and cast out. We come today called to worship God, knowing that we have never done enough, knowing who we are, but believing that Christ has covered us with Christ's love. And that love never fails. And because of God's grace, God's mercy, when we come wounded as we are, we are enough. We show our allegiance to God and our rightness to, not with a super cloak visible on our shoulders, we reserve that for baptism and confirmation and for the day of a funeral where you put an, a, a, a cloth over the top, a pall over the top of a casket or cremains. But thankfully, instead, we show our allegiance, our righteousness, in our love for God and for one another as we allow Christ more and more to live in, with, and through us and transform our lives. Admittedly, there is pain in not gathering at the table here in grace, at Grace each week. We are not alone in that grief. Imagine that table long ago set before David as the 23rd Psalm declares, with a feast and a cup filled to overflowing. That feast, that feast David received, those blessings were given and received not in the safety and security of the green pastures that are talked about earlier in the psalm, or at a meal surrounded by his friends and family. That table was prepared and received by one person in the presence of an enemy, in the midst of battle. And yet, even in that place, God came and fed and blessed in the midst of David's own strife and loneliness. The table, whether banquet table, kitchen table, or picnic cloth, is a tangible symbol of welcome. It's about having a place there, and that's what we need to think about. Having that table spread before us is a symbol of forgiveness, reconciliation, and abundant blessing. 
It's a place of oneness and abiding. It's a holy place, regardless of its location. We enter that holy space not by our own merit or ability, but because of whose we are. We enter in faith, and the Holy One provides for us there. In this time of COVID-19, when Holy Communion has been scarce and traditional ways of preparing and worshiping and receiving have been set aside for safety's sake, it is still possible for us to gather together at the table, even virtually. We come having loved the best we could and confessing the times when we have blocked love showing through. We come to worship, trusting in God, and we soak in God's presence, knowing that we are anointed made holy, and that our cup runs over. And fed and forgiven, we can walk on, knowing that God not only follows us, but is at our right hand, and that God dwells in us, in our house, and we in God's forever. Remember today, not just the ritual of Holy Communion so much, remember the table, remember the words of Jesus, and the gifts from God, lovingly given, and received. Remember that you are welcome. And remember too that God so loved the world and continues to love the world that God sent God's only Son. Not that Jesus would condemn the world, but so that the world could be saved through him. We who believe this will not perish, but will have eternal life and a place someday at the banquet table with no end. Amen. We'll continue now with our hymn of the day, You Are My King.
continue now with the Apostles' Creed. Please say the words along with me and feel them in your heart. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now please join me in a time of prayer. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and for all those in need. Gracious host, fill your church and its people with a spirit of joyous hospitality. We pray for bishops, teachers, church leaders, and all children of God as they invite others to your table of boundless grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as creation waits with eager longing for redemption, protect your creatures from natural disaster and mistreatment. Quell the tempest ravaging hillsides and coastlines. Restore valleys, mountains, and pastures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as you set a table in the presence of enemies, so bless the efforts of diplomats, international peace workers, and world leaders who navigate conflict. May they proceed with dialogue and understanding so that justice and peace prevails. Be with us in our communities as well. Help us to feel your presence in all we face, even as COVID-19 can also be seen as an enemy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, let your gentleness be known among us and among those who are weary or ill. We pray especially for those fighting the effects of the COVID virus, as well as for all those on our prayer list and those in our hearts. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers, caretakers, and all helpers who see to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, when we are quick to judge outward appearance, remind us how you clothe all in your mercy. We pray for ministries that provide needed clothing and other personal care assistance in this community here in Tomahawk and in Lincoln County. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as we remember those who have died and are gathered at the heavenly banquet, comfort us with your presence. Assure us of your peace at all times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen now as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us always to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time when we usually collect an offering when we are here in the sanctuary, we are thankful for the many gifts Grace is receiving uh, in order to continue our mission and our ministry here. May we always remember that we, too, are an offering. I also remind you of the special offering that we are collecting this month, an offering for ELCA Disaster Response. ELCA Disaster Response goes everywhere across the globe 
providing people and resources to help those in need. And think particularly for those with all of the hurricanes and the fires out west. So we just ask that you consider giving to that particular offering this month. Please pray with me the offering prayer. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink, and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. This summer, our seven youth ready to be confirmed worked on their faith boards. For those of you that are unfamiliar, these boards are a summary of their faith journey thus far. As you will see, these young women and young men worked very hard on these boards, and not only does their understanding of their faith shine through, but their personalities do as well. Since we are unable to have the traditional faith reception, we will be highlighting one or two each week for the next several weeks. This week, I introduce to you Mason Scott Peck and Ellie Jane Witulski. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Mason Peck, and this is my faith board. My faith statement is, it's a never-ending journey. It's only checkpoints. Yes, you may have moments where you finally think, I've done it, I've done all that I can, but it's never officially over. There's always more to be done. My favorite quote, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery, and today is a gift. That is why it is called the present. And I like this quote because it proves that you should treat every day as, as say, your last day. Because it's a gift to you to still be alive that day. This photo is when I got baptized at Redeemer. And this is where my first journey pretty much started. People along my faith journey. Renee Loca, Georgianne Crass, Patty Gadke, Mark Zemer, Pastor Gary, Mark Gadke, my dad, Faye Witalski, my mom, and my grandpa. These three images are from one of the first big trips me and my dad ever took together. This was really good for me. It helped me realize a lot of things. And that, what, at this trip, I remember I was always asking my dad to carry more of my stuff. But nowadays, he's always asking me to carry more. This is a photo of my Grandpa Al. He was the biggest part in my faith journey. He was always telling me, never give up, always keep going, and to never lose faith. I don't know where I would be without him in my faith journey or even my life. He was the, one of the biggest parts of my life and always will be. This picture was at my grandpa's wedding to George Ann Crass, and all of the people in this photo have been a big part of my journey, especially all of my family members from, I, they meant a lot and have always been there. Okay, this is, I drew a motor because I, it's something I've always enjoyed and all of the people that I have stated have brought our part, all parts of the motor that build my faith statement, my entire faith journey. They're all working together to keep me moving.
Thanks for listening. I hope you liked it. My name is Ellie Wachowski, and this is my faith board. I believe I am a child of God. I believe God has a plan for everyone. I believe God is always with us. I believe God forgives our sins. And I believe God is our savior. The Bible verse I chose is from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Do not fear for I am with you. Do not be afraid for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. My faith board theme is growing through faith. Ways I have grown through faith is through church milestones, including First Communion and third grade Bible presentation, through friends, through baptism, which was on May 21st, 2006. Through camp, and through service projects. People who have helped guide me in my faith journey include my mom, my dad, my sister Grace, Melissa Haifman, Renee Loca, Britta Liebelt, Laurel Ranke, Bryn Bomier, and Jade Wanta. Jeannie Osero, Lisa Kennedy Mayer, Serena Ranke, Greta Chugum, Brennan Steffen, Morgan Hansman, Megan Miles. Margie Welke, Patty Gadke, Pastor Check, Claudia Ziemer, Mark Ziemer, also camp counselors, including Joel, Cheyenne, and Catherine. My Grandma Annie, my Grandma Diane, Grandma Marie, Lori Schmidt, Wendy Black, and Georgie and Al. Thank you to everyone who has helped me in my faith journey. We'll continue now with the blessing. Welcoming God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Our sending hymn is Cornerstone.
and now go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.